Here he comes. Especially under all these uh, the circumstances, yeah. I understand it's your birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, so just a few questions. I think everyone here is uh, well aware of the new laws that have taken place in Colorado, but if you could just take a moment to kind of uh, uh, explain more your involvement in the whole situation. Well, you know, uh, I'm a partner in uh, Dank Colorado, number one uh, dispensary in the country right now. So, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but we're having fun and been very busy, and uh, I'm squeezing in my 40th birthday party here with everybody, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so in The Guardian, it was recently quoted, uh, speaking about space queens, and I quote here, you said, a relaxing, mellow high that you feel through your whole body, head to toe. Can you explain in kind of layman's terms what that means for those of us who've never smoked marijuana? Makes you feel good. <laughs> Uh, in the uh, UK Reuters division, recently quoted, you said, uh, in an anticipating surge in demand for marijuana upon opening that, and I quote, uh, it will be like people waiting in line for a Pink Floyd concert. Yes, I did say that. Yes, um, and it was. Yeah. Green Wednesday was like a line for a Pink Floyd concert. Power to the people. Um, just a follow-up question. Have you ever been to a Pink Floyd concert? No. <laughs> So, in the Rolling Stones, you recently had an article about your dispensary. Did you ever think that if you were going to be in the Rolling Stones, it would be for something other than your musical talents? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's funny. That's a great one because uh, <laughs> yes, I made the Rolling cover. No, it wasn't the cover of the Rolling Stone, but yes, it was an article. But uh, you know, we have a concert series, so you know that's uh, they'll pick up on that and they'll come back. All right. And if you could also just explain to us, what are your musical talents that you? What have? are his, his musical talents? Um. <laughs> yeah, he says. Well, Gambit always says that I play the skin flute very well, but I don't know what that means. I don't know. You would know. Um, you are also you're often quoted as saying, "Here's the deal." That's one of my uh, signature phrases, yes. I've Here's developed that for years. Here's the deal. Uh, could you tell us just once and for all, what is the deal? <laughs> uh, the deal is... Uh, yeah. The deal is we're here right now and that's the deal. <laughs> so uh, I was looking at this oversized pictures on the wall in your dispensary during a charity event showing people, uh, sorry, <laughs> there's a lot of people there and they're supposed to guess which one is you. Which one do you know which one is you? No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me either. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's another catchphrase of his. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Never happened. Oh, I, do I say that a lot? Never happened. Say that one again. I don't know what you're talking about. Talk a little louder. Okay, Mr. Jones, you were recently interviewed by the Waterloo Courier with raving enthusiasm from the locals there. Can you either confirm or deny rumors uh, to let us know if there's any legitimacy to these rumors that the Waterloo wants to bring you back as king? <laughs> you know, uh, they might. They might. They might. Old Waterloo. All right, last question. No. <laughs> That's okay with you. You got a lot more? Uh, <laughs> just a couple things I've written out. All right, all right. All right. So, Mr. Jones, uh, with the newfound fame and glory, do you feel like you're the same level-headed, conscientious uh, person that you've always been, or has this in any way changed who you are? No, I'm just as... Uh... <laughs> I'm the same. I'm, it's all the same. Right there. It's all the same. Right there? That's right. the deal. <laughs> so, 
I noticed that your glasses are remarkably similar to, similar to Greg Gamet. Yes. I was wondering, did you copy him or did he copy you? No, I, I, uh, it was subliminal because I didn't realize it until after I got them. But I was drawn to those glasses for some reason. And, uh, you know, evidently only really cool people wear them. Good <laughs> Um, a few more questions. Oh, Do man. you enjoy having Greg as your boss? <laughs> All the time. Every day. And, you know, he thanks me greatly for cleaning the bathrooms. You know, and that's something when someone tells you thanks for cleaning the bathrooms and you're the best, you, you know, you'll love that. So I heard that you like Jaeger shots. Yes. I was wondering, yeah. have, have you ever encountered any kind of an injury while doing oh, yeah. <laughs> And if so, if you could just explain well, what happened. Here's how, here's how I'll explain it for the, most of these people have, uh, who are either there or have heard the story many times. But the song Booze Wound, which was a great original song by the band Hop On Johnny, which is one of my bands. And Matt Hartlip was in that band right over there. And actually Johnny Giordano, somewhere over here, is in that That'd band. Hot yeah. So anyways, uh, you know, the booze wounds, you know, sometimes you drink too much and you do something to yourself that hurts. And... Uh, I had to have surgery after my deal one time with some Jaeger, so that's where we'll leave it there. But, you know, yeah, I, I've already done three Jaegers tonight, so it didn't oh. stop me, you know. It's, yeah, it's, you're yeah, doing great. Yeah. Okay, so uh, many of those who waited in line for hours saw you chomping rapidly on Pringles. And uh, we've just been flooded with questions wanting to know about how many Pringles... Uh, how many tubes of Pringles can you eat a day? Well, my great friend and, and business partner, Greg Gammon, and I often have challenges, you know. And there's the mini stack of Pringles, which is like that one in the store, you know. There's like the mid-level, and then there's yeah. the big one. And, you know, depending on how much weed I've smoked, I can crush the whole big one. Right, nice. just one? Uh, yeah, one's enough. That's yeah. still impressive. It's like eight servings. <laughs> Also, there's been reports about you missing a nail, and everybody wants to know: Has it grown back yet? No, no. I made him. I made him uh, leave that off the list. Um, also, regarding the woman from the come and go, have you taken that girl on a date yet? No, absolutely not. Never. Okay. Yeah. Does that bother you? No. I'm proud. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. So this might seem like a very simple question, but those of us who've been following you on t on Twitter uh, and Weed Monkey Live, it would mean so much if you could just tell me. Uh, well, I have so many thoughts and questions. I can't begin to scratch the surface. Uh, on the knowledge that you have on so many different things. And I was wondering if you could just take a few moments to tell people some of the things that you consider very important to life. Well, my wife and my daughter, of course. And, yeah. uh, you know, and then uh, all my friends. I got a lot of great friends and always have, and uh, that's that's the most important always. Nice. All right, well, Your now I'm going to... One last question. <laughs> This, this is just it. How did you christen your house? Oh, uh, I pissed on it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was in the bathroom, but evidently it was just a wall in the bedroom, you know? <laughs> I have a question. Chief, go ahead. Do you shave your balls? Never. Never. That's ridiculous. <laughs> There's a difference between shaving your... There's a difference between shaving your balls and man grooming, all right, Chief? Come on. On that same subject, a lot of people say if you shave, it gives you a visual inch. Does that work with Gamut or not? <laughs> <laughs> I heard he needs all the help he can get, so I'm sure he tried it. All right, interview over. Yeah.